So I'm here with Phil Joel for this coffee talk and I'm turning it into a breakfast chat because you may know him from his worship band Zeeland, but also from his work with the Newsboys. They had a song called Breakfast that I personally love, so I had to take the opportunity. Of course you did. There's a reason the Captain Crunch is here. Right. I'm not just crazy. No. So we're throwing it back a little bit. We might get to that at the end, but you're here for something a little more exciting right now because it's brand new. You have a book. Ta-da! Redwoods and Whales. Yes. And we're going to talk about this. I was checking this out um, over the weekend. And first of all, it's so approachable. Like the way that you write is so unintimidating. It's like you're just talking. Good. Like to the person. Yeah. And you even are very aware of people who um, maybe have questions about faith. Sure. Like you don't shy away from really big questions that could be yeah. intimidating. So yeah. I love that it's not intimidating. What have your interactions with people been like who have these questions? And how did that yeah. affect this book? And what did, like what have you learned from those? Um, well, you know, th- this is this is a big, beautiful world full of all kinds of different people who yes. have had various exposures to um, all kinds of things, you know. And God, of course, is just this massive, big question in everyone's mind. Um, at some point, everyone, you know, going to ask, who is God? What is he about? And, uh, and we... Sounds kind of conceited and arrogant, but we, we kind of have the answer. We know who God is because he came to earth and showed us what and who God is, what he's like, what his character is, what his nature is, and um, in the form of Jesus. And so he, it, it's kind of not that complicated. We just need to look at Jesus and go uh, to understand that's the nature of God. He's good. He's loving. He, he's a healer. Um, People flocked around him, you know, thousands and thousands of people because they felt great about themselves when they were around him. And he was and is God in man form. And so point to all that is um, so many people feel like God is mean or is a jerk or is just like out to get them. And that couldn't be further than the truth. He's out to get us, but get us in a good way. He wants our hearts because he knows our hearts are best kept in his hands, you know? So, yeah, um, yeah, you know, I love people that have not really been exposed to too many things of church. Their questions are generally pretty raw and pretty out there. And uh, so this book answers a few of them, I hope. Yeah. A few of the big ones, a few of the big questions. Um, One of of my favorite things that happened recently recently was uh, we got a review from some person who said, I had no idea this book was, you know, a faith-based Christian book huh. until I got halfway through it. You know, I'm like, oh, you know, and then, she, then it kind of dawned on them, um, which, yeah. Uh, yeah, hopefully they didn't feel like it was a bait and switch, no, you know. I think it's good, though. I just wanted to let them know at a certain point, hey, we're going to talk about the Bible here a little bit. Um, don't be afraid of this because it's, it's good. Yeah. It's good for you, good for your soul, good for your being. Yeah. So um, let's just go with it if you would, you know. What do you think, because this is an interesting conversation of just how, you know, I'm a Christian, you're a Christian, we follow Jesus. Mm. So how have you learned is the best way to approach faith conversations with people who are just not sure about it, you know, and who don't have like the lingo that we do? Yeah. Like what have you learned those people really need to hear? Like how can we love on them better? Um, oh, I think that's just it. I think how, you know, just loving on people is obviously the, the, the thing, you know, we're called, uh, we're called to love God and love others. Um, and, and most of the times that's in how we conduct ourselves and how we live our lives and how we, um, you know, include people, uh, not exclude, um, how we, uh, you know, um, communicate and hopefully we communicate with humility not pride you know pride repels people's hearts but humility is attractive I think um um God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble is what the Bible says which means he likes humility and I think um so just sort of you know communicating with anyone on a from a place of you know I I I haven't got all the answers I haven't got it all figured out at all but I, I I believe I've found the answer and that is Jesus. Jesus makes sense to me, makes sense to my heart, and makes sense to how I'm going to live this life because he's laid it out for me as to how I'm meant to live. Um, so I think humility is a big one, you know? Yeah. Because if we come, if, if I don't like arrogance and pride. If someone tries to communicate 
to me from a place of I'm up here and you're down there. Let me just bestow upon you a little truth or something, a little nugget of. Mm-hmm. Ugh. Yeah, like it shuts it shuts me down. Yeah. a lot of the time. So yeah, this book also talks about um, some hard issues like feeling stuck. Maybe that can be something more serious like anxiety, depression, yeah. suicidal thoughts. Like mm. those are real things too. So yes. what um, will this book, um, how does this book speak to that? How is it going to help those people? And yeah. What's your encouragement to them? We people d- who are going through that, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I, I think most of those problems start with a, a vision problem, mm. you know. And I don't mean our contact lenses need to to be strengthened, um, <laughs> although mine always do. I just seem to be getting blinder and blinder. But um, people don't see God correctly. If we've got the wrong idea about God, he's, uh, 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 then, then we're going to see, our, we're going to look at life through the wrong lenses. Our life begins with how we see and understand God and how he sees and understands and actually likes us. Those three things are really important, and they're in the book. And that if we're not understanding and believing and walking in the fact that the truth, that, that God knows who we are and, and he gets us, even as complicated and as messed up as we, we can get, and he actually really, really likes us, and, he, and he's really good, he's really for us, if we don't see that, um, then we're going to be looking for those things from other places. We're going to be looking to be seen. You know, Give me this thing. We're going to be looking to be seen, you know, through this. And, yes. and we're going to be looking to be understood. And hopefully we're going to be liked. Hmm. You know, do people like me? Do they really like me? So, um, you know, it all gets back to us understanding who God is. Yeah. And that's a big question. And the cool thing is God is very real. And as we cry out to him and say, hey, God, I want to know who you are. I want health in my soul and I, and I need to breathe deep in this life. Speak to me. Show me who you are. He's not got his arms folded going, well, you're just a grimy little maggot. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to talk to you. No, he's going to finally thank you for calling to me. I'm speaking. And now maybe you'll listen. But um, for us, on our part, maybe we need to clear the clutter a little bit, you know, get rid of some of the noise. Yeah. So that we can hear, be still, and know that God is God and he's good. So yeah. It's funny because on the way in here we were talking about the dentist. Um, when you got here, and you have a book, or in the book, you have a story oh, yeah. about your wife Heather mm-hmm. as a kid, and how um, I thought it was a great illustration of how sometimes people view God. Yeah. And it was like um, when she was little, she loved her dentist and she trusted him, and she yeah. had to get like some teeth pulled, and it was for, for the best, and she was mm-hmm. like all about it. And then her brother told her, as elder brothers often do, like, oh, it's gonna be terrible, and he twisted how she saw like her dentist who she trusted, but yes. that wasn't true, you know? And I right. thought that was such an interesting... He twisted how yeah. she saw her dentist and then her behavior mm-hmm. changed. She took some drastic measures on her teeth. You'll have to so get the book. So what, yeah. believe, what we believe <laughs> yes. changes, you know, determines how yeah. we behave. Like if we're thinking and believing the wrong stuff, we're going to behave in the wrong ways. Right. So if we're if we're seeing God through the wrong lens, if we think He's mean and He's going to get us or going to get you, um, then we are going to be afraid and we're going to move away from Him as opposed to toward Him, and which is where the life is. And we're going to we're going to be looking for yeah. We're just not we're just not going to behave right. And so I think sometimes our behavior, if we find ourselves behaving consistently over and over too, and even in addictive cycles, in the wrong ways, it's, a, it's an indicator that we're believing the wrong thing somewhere. We're believing that this is going to be giving me something that just doesn't, you know, and, and I'm, I'm breathing shallow and I'm not feeling in the right, you know, I'm, not, mm-hmm. I'm off. So those, in, those can be good indicators that maybe something's wrong up here and, 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 and in our heart. Um, and so... At that point, we have this responsibility personally to kind of go, okay, let's look at this. What's going on? Let's put my life under the microscope. First and foremost, let's determine, I want to, I want to know who God is and I want to know how to see Him and I want to know how He sees me. Oh, that's great. So if this sounds like you and you need some of this 
truth, mm-hmm. you're ready to thrive a little bit more, get unstuck, or answer your big questions about God, check out Redwoods and Wales. Mm-hmm.